Good evening everyone, welcome to St Thomas at Home and this is for Wednesday evening. My name is Penny Lay, I'm the Licensed Lay Minister here at St Thomas. You're very welcome to be with us. Uh, please don't be alarmed, this is coming from home, um, so please don't be alarmed by any noises that you hear in the background. If you've not been with us before, this is a service we have some quiet time prayer time, Bible reading and a song at the end and a thought for the day. So as we start our service, I hope your day's been good for you. Um, seems weird last week, you know, we were in absolute throes of a heat wave and now we're having so much rain I think we're all going to develop webbed feet at some point. But I invite you now to just if you might want to light a candle or play some music but let's just have a moment of quiet as we reflect on the day that's been <clears throat> And we start our service with a Bible verse from Deuteronomy 33, verse 27. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Amen. Our Bible reading tonight is from the NIV, the New International Version. There will be a link to it on our Facebook page. It's Psalm 144. Uh, if you have your own Bible, please do just read along. This is how it goes. Psalm 144 Praise be to the Lord my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. He is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues people under me. Lord, what are human beings that you care for them? Mere mortals, that you think of them. They are like a breath. Their days are like a fleeting shadow. Part your heavens, Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they may smoke. Send forth lightning and scatter the enemy. Shoot your arrows and root them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> well, during times of stress, it's good to think that we have someone that wants to help us, someone that can listen to us and just be with us. And that's what seems the, the psalmist seems to be saying. He identifies God as a stronghold, a deliverer, and describes him as a fortress. Now, of course, a fortress or castle is generally thought of as a safe place. When you think of the walls of Jericho, <coughs> excuse me, the walls were so thick that rooms, whole houses, could be built into them. In the account of Rahab, it says uh, she's described as living in the city walls. The psalmist praises God for giving him strength for his body. And maybe as he's talking about battles, maybe he's just possibly just finished one. Of course, the psalmist David was originally a shepherd boy, plunged into battle uh, when he fought Goliath. From this time on, he trains as a soldier and becomes king. So he was used to battles, lots of them. But he describes God as the deliverer and someone that will offer him refuge. And then we have this verse where the psalmist says, Lord, what are human beings that you take care of them? Because let's face it, so often we turn our back to God and we don't give him the credit that he really deserves. 
we don't give him the love that he deserves either, especially when he's our fortress and our deliverer. And he cares for us so much, he offers us his hand again and again and again. And he keeps doing it. Because sometimes it's us that builds up the walls to God rather than taking refuge within the walls. But it's in reaching out to us time and time again that we can see how much God loves us. For a start, he gives us Jesus, his only son, to take our place. And it's when our lives are touched by the love of God that we can know that place of refuge. Recently, <clears throat> I read on the Christian Healing Mission page, uh, they'd expanded a little bit on this, and they look at verse 5 in particular, and this is their thoughts on it. Verse 5 is the part where it says, Part your heavens, Lord, and come down, touch the mountains so that they may smoke. So this is their interpretation on it. We all long for an increased touch of God upon our lives. In fact, many would say that there's really no hope for us unless God reaches down and touches us. There's very little we can do to get out of some of the messes in which we find ourselves. So it's a sobering thought that the touch of God can make a mountain smoke and that this is the power available from just one touch of God. Now we all know that technically the power of God could change any situation, but we're just not sure that it's actually going to bring that touch to us, or whether it really will make a difference. So this verse is such a helpful reminder that the awesome power of God is available to us. When Jesus touched those that were sick, he may not have caused those people to smoke, but his touch certainly brought the power of God to them. A challenging and faith-building prayer would be, touch my life with the touch that can make mountains smoke. Yes, God is gentle, loving and kind, but he is also the one whose touch can open the eyes of the blind and raise the dead to life. So let's welcome the power of his touch upon us. As I say, that's from the Christian Healing Mission pages. So I just want to end with this. I think we need to learn to ask God to show us how to take down our own walls and to learn to be open and trusting to him. And to know and accept that it's okay to ask for help and in those times, take our refuge in him. Amen. We're going to come to a time of prayer. <clears throat> but I just want to read this uh, particular passage to you. In the Gospel of John, verse 33. And again, when we think about this, about Jesus talking about peace, we can again think about Jesus as our refuge. Because he says in the Gospel of John, chapter 16, 33, I've said this to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will face persecutions, but take courage, because I have conquered the world. So let's pray for the world, for each other and ourselves. And as we pray, please do use the comments box. Um, pray for each other as you see other people's comments come up. And please do write your own comments and prayer requests. So let's turn to God in prayer now. And we ask him, touch my life with the touch that make mountains smoke. I invite you to pray for the nations of the world, <clears throat> for places where you know that there is strife and unrest. So many places around the world that really need God's healing touch upon them. 
So please do write those countries now. Lord, we bring these countries to you. We ask for peace on the streets. And we ask for governments of the world, even our own, that they will be led by honourable leaders, and that your rule of love and respect will be lived out here on earth. Amen. <clears throat> and I invite you to bring to God those that you know that need reassurance at this time. There's lots of people that are still worried about the virus, about returning to workspaces, to schools, just being out in shops as well. So Lord, for anyone that is, that is nervous about these things, please do bring them to God and in touch. Lord, we name those that need love, reassurance, and that comforting touch in their lives, especially for anyone suffering from anxiety or depression. And we pray for those that feel unsafe because of the pandemic. Lord, fill them with your spirit. And Lord, again, touch their lives with the touch that can make mountains smoke. Amen. And I invite you to bring to God anyone that you know that's working in the medical profession that needs help from God just to keep going, for carers as well and for key workers. So I invite you to bring them to God now. Lord, we pray for all hospital staff, medical researchers, office staff, cleaners and cooks, doctors and nurses, all who work in the medical and the carers professions. We pray that you will give skill and resilience to all of the caring for sick and your wisdom to all of those searching for a vaccine. And we pray for all key workers that have been really going at their jobs ever since lockdown started. For all those that keep continuously, keep our lorries on the road so that deliveries can be made to shops. For those that deal with emergencies, such as telephones and electrical power going out and being in the roads to restore them. Lord, there are so many people that are key workers that we will never stop to think about. But please, Lord, give them some rest and let them know they're loved, Lord, for all the work that they do. But Lord, we ask this through your name. Amen. And I invite you to bring to God those that you know that are not well, for those that are suffering in mind, body, emotions or spirit and raise them up to God and name them now. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing and tender care this night those who are ill or in pain knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to health and strength. And be present, O merciful Lord, and protect us through the silent times, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may find rest in your eternal changelessness. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And finally we pray for our homes. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. Make your holy, dwell, holy angels dwell with us in peace, and make your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's draw our prayers together in the words that Jesus himself taught us, in the Lord's Prayer. And we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those that sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to end in a few moments with our worship song, uh, which I can't remember the name off the top of my head and I can't reach the piece of paper, but it will be in the link. And I do hope that as you sing it, it's quite an old song, so you might be familiar with it, but I hope you receive a blessing from it. Before we go, before I give the final blessing, I um, just want to say if there's anything you need prayer for, please don't hesitate to contact us through our Facebook page. You can also find details about us on a Church Near You website. And if you want to support financially the work of St Thomas, we'd be very, very grateful. And again, just write to us and we can give you details. Or again, it's on the a Church Near You website page. Please do keep in touch and our next service is on Friday and please keep safe as well. So our final prayers. And this is one as we retire for the evening. God our Father by whose mercy the world turns safely from darkness and will return again to light. We place in your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems and our unfulfilled hopes, knowing only what you bless will prosper. To your love and protection we commit each other and all those we love, knowing that you alone are our sure defender, our fortress, our refuge. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And in peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord makes his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. And the Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed the service tonight. Our next one is on Friday. So please do join, join in with us then, uh, again at the same time, 7 o'clock. And until then, please keep safe, keep washing your hands, and good night, and God bless.